emotions and a Coptic perspective. Um, this is for Sociology 1306-201 for Dr. Marcos Antonio Hinaldez. Um, I just want to say this is my work and my work only. A brief summary about the film is uh, Maximus, played by Russell Crowe. He's first, uh, uh, he's the leader of the, of the Roman army. So uh, after, after winning the first victory, uh, the emperor, uh, Marcus Aurelius, is, tells uh, Maximus that he's gonna be the new emperor. Uh, after his son, Commodus, uh, Marcus Aurelius' son, Commodus, hears about this, uh, Commodus kills his father and becomes a new emperor. Uh, Maximus is said to be killed, but is able to escape and uh, goes, uh, uh, it's then uh, treated as a slave, eventually becomes a gladiator, and uh, goes into Rome and uh, wins the crowd over as a gladiator and upsets Commodus and his plans to take over, to take over Rome. Um, uh, Commodus tries to kill uh, Maximus several ways throughout the film, uh, but uh, Maximus is able to, to defeat all the enemies and uh, win the crowd over, which is one of the most important things throughout this film. And at the end, Commodus, challenge, Commodus challenges Maximus to one final battle. Right before the battle, Commodus injures Maximus, but uh, somehow uh, Maximus is still able to defeat Maximus, I mean defeat Commodus, and is able to kill him, but since he was severely wounded, dies at the same time. The social problem that I will try to explain through, uh, throughout this uh, PowerPoint is uh, identifying the, the role of a gladiator and the social class in which he stands. Uh, what exactly does it mean to be a gladiator? Uh, social inequalities, uh, I have some negative and some positive because, uh, well, uh, as a gladiator, yes, they had many uh, hard times, but at the same time, there were also some good sides to it. Uh, some negative uh, things about being a gladiator is that they had to fight for their freedom. Basically, they had to uh, fight uh, up to win up to 25 battles and then gain their freedom, or had to be have the title of a gladiator for five years, which is basically around about around the same time as having 25 battles, since they had to fight about three to five times a year. Uh, and throughout the film, you see that they're worth uh, less than animals. Uh, this is uh, directly seen throughout the film when uh, Proximo, the one that buys Maximus. Uh, he offers uh, more money for camels and less money for slaves. So uh, we can see compared to, uh, to animals, slaves, gladiators, along with homeless, uh, convicts, they're worth less than, uh, than animals. Um, they train most of the day. Uh, they live really harsh lives. Um, they have to train uh, complete hours of the day, about like 14 to 16 hours a day. And if they weren't severely uh, wounded in uh, combat, they were uh, may sometimes even killed throughout training. So we can see that if they weren't killed uh, during combat in the arena, they might even be killed during the during the training. Uh, they had to live in cells. Occasionally, uh, we saw uh, throughout the film that Maximus was chained up. Uh, whenever he had to talk someone or when uh, when the crowd was looking at at them, uh, they had to be in cage. Um, when uh, uh, Lucilla, uh, Commodus' sister, uh, goes to see Maximus, um, Maximus has to be chained up. So we see how, like, even though maybe they're not uh, they're not slaves, uh, they're still they still have to be chained up and as, and are treated as slaves. Uh, gladiators do not choose to be gladiators. Like I mentioned before, uh, gladiators are uh, they could have been slaves. They could have been convicts, they could have been homeless people just thrown into an arena. Basically, uh, most of them were just sent in there to die and make profit for those uh, putting people into the, into the arena, such as Proximo, the one, the, the owner of Gladiators. He buys them off the, the markets. Um, and they were uh, severe, uh, heavily guarded. Uh, we see this uh, when Maximus wins different battles. Uh, guards walk alongside him. Uh, they have to always take care of them, make sure that they don't escape. So we see that they were uh, heavily guarded. On the positive side, they were looked upon as heroes. 
we see this through uh, Lucilla's son, Lucius, when uh, he walks up to one of where Maximus and along with the other gladiators are engaged. We see that he comes up to him and asks him uh, if he is the Spaniard because he has already gained fame because of the battles outside of, the, of Rome on the Colosseum. So Lucius comes up to him and asks him uh, if he is a Spaniard uh, that everybody's talking about. He says yes, and Lucius in response says that he will cheer for him, for him in the arena. So we can see that uh, even though he's in, in cage, uh, he's locked up, uh, he already has uh, followers, uh, even for little kids. And as the, as the movie goes on, we see that uh, the more victories that he gets, the more famous Maximus gets, and this in turn affects uh, Commodus uh, wanting to rule all over Rome. Uh, they receive better food. This is not directly uh, touched throughout the film because we do not see that uh, uh, gladiators are given better food, but they they do tend to research, uh, to get better food from research. Uh, it shows that well, the more victories they got, uh, the better they were treated. Um, the, the better food they receive, uh, they receive more medical attention. Well, this is, uh, of course, if they were severely wounded in battle, of course they were going to receive more medical attention. But, like I said, if, if they were, uh, they kept on bringing in profits for the ones that owned them, if they kept on winning, uh, of course they were going to receive medical attention to make sure they were at their best so they could keep on making more money for those, uh, for those who owned them. Uh, they, from research, it shows that they were allowed to take occasional showers and massages. This is not shown throughout the film, but from research, it shows that they were. And like I said, it, the more victories they got, uh, the better treatment they got. Uh, some objective and subjective realities about the film. Uh, some objective realities were that uh, gladiators were taught uh, how to die. From research, uh, it shows that uh, they were, it doesn't directly show in the film, but from research it shows that uh, they swore on an oath in order uh, to die with a, it says, that they swore on an oath uh, submitting to death in the arena. They were supposed to die with honor, with dignity. Uh, they were not supposed to, if they were already in their last uh, seconds, I mean, they had to submit to death. Um, if they were already down, they, they had to, they, they were going to die. See, another thing, another objective reality uh, is that uh, whenever a gladiator was about to kill another gladiator in the arena, they had to look up at the emperor and wait for the emperor to show a thumb up or thumb down whether to be able to kill him or not. Uh, we see this throughout the film when uh, Maximus is about to kill one of the most famous uh, gladiators, one, of, one that won his freedom. He has him on the ground, he looks up at a Commodus, but, uh, and Commodus uh, shows a, a thumb down, is signaling Maximus to kill him. In turn, Maximus does not kill him, uh, even upsetting more the, the emperor. But according uh, to research, they, they did have to look at, at the emperor, because a gladiator, if a gladiator were to kill uh, another gladiator in the arena without having, looking at the emperor before, uh, they would be they would have to uh, be submitted to punishment because back in Rome, an emperor would be the only one who was authorized or the only one to give authorization for the killing of another. Uh, another sub another ob objective reality is that, well, of course, we saw that uh, gladiators had harsh lives. We saw this directly throughout the whole film when they, Maximus was locked up, when he was heavily guarded, uh, that they trained most of the day. Um, we see this uh, because uh, they, they train most of the day. Uh, there's one scene where uh, while in training, a uh, gla uh, gladiator kills another gladiator. So, I mean, like I said before, if they weren't, tra uh, they weren't killed in combat, they were killed uh, in training. Uh, subjective reality about the wounded gladiator would be that they could get married and have children. Um, this is not directly touched uh, in the film because as I said before, uh, gladiators already had harsh uh, enough lives uh, through training, being locked up. How are they gonna uh, have a family and maintain their, ch their children? Yes, after gaining their freedom, they, they could uh, do that. But as long as uh, they were a gladiator, they they cannot do any of these things. Uh,
throughout the, throughout the film, uh, Maximus defies the Emperor uh, in many ways when he does not kill the other gladiator by the simple fact that he survived when he was sent to be killed. Um, uh, we, in reality, uh, we, we would think that uh, if uh, anybody were to uh, defy an emperor back in Rome or a king or anything, we would say that, uh, well, they would be automatically killed on the spot. That's why this is a subjective reality because uh, Maximus defies him several times. In order for Commodus to uh, please the crowd, he lets him live. Uh, one, of the, one of the senators keeps telling Commodus to kill him, but since Commodus wants to get rid of the Senate and control the whole Rome to, uh, keep, keep the whole Rome to himself, uh, he has to keep the people happy. So uh, this comes back to bite uh, Commodus, but I mean, this is a, that's why this is a subjective reality. Uh, another subjective reality is that uh, gladiators were treated better than slaves. Um, we, this is a subjective reality because uh, gladiators were basic, basically slaves. Uh, yes, they they had to, they could fight for the freedom. Yes, maybe they did receive uh, better food. They got more comedies than slaves, but they were still chained up. They were still locked up in cells. Uh, they were treated. Uh, less than uh, animals, for example. They were viewed as the very bottom of the, of the chain of it, and anybody. They were right on the line with slaves, convicts, homeless. So we cannot say that they were actually treated better than slaves because they were at exactly the same level. Uh, now I'm gonna hybridize uh, the functionist and a conflict perspective. First of all, I want to say that uh, from a functionist perspective, he talk about how every role in society uh, place has, has a meaning to society. Uh, for example, the role of a gladiator, well, its main function was for entertainment, for to, to entertain the crowd, to entertain uh, any, anybody in the Colosseum and outside of the Colosseum whenever they fought. Uh, from a conflict perspective, you look at certain individuals so, uh, maybe a certain group, for example, the emperor or the senate, who has complete control over over uh, the entire, uh, for example, Rome. Um, let's see. Uh, the hybridization. I'm gonna combine uh, the functionist and conflict perspective of the of being gladiator. So we see that gladiator serves as a form of entertainment, but at the same time, is getting uh, is giving Commodus what he wants. Is giving Proximo, the owner of the, the gladiators, what, what he wants. Um, as long as the gladiators keep on fighting, uh, Proximo will make more money. Uh, Commodus' main goal is to uh, uh, take over Rome, and in order to do that, he wants to keep them happy. That is the reason why he brings up the games in the first place. He wants to make sure uh, that the people are happy and that they love him for it. So, uh, that he, uh Maximus' role as a gladiator brings entertainment into, into Rome, and at the same time, Commodus is getting what he wants. Um, outside of Rome, uh, when uh, Proximo, the owner of the gladiators, the one who trains them, is the one uh, obtaining the money from all of this. Uh, he's the one getting rich. Uh, Proximo mentions that uh, right, right before several battles, he, he gives several speeches telling how uh, once you kill another uh, gladiator, the, the crowd will applaud you for it, they will love you for it, and in turn you will love them for it. So you can see the hybridization of how the, uh, the gladiators roll and what the people want, the, one in, the ones in control, the, they're, everybody's getting, uh, getting what they want. So this is just like uh, back and forth love uh, amongst themselves. along with slaves, homeless, uh, convict, buck convicts, were viewed as the lowest uh, individuals. They were, uh, if, they, if they got paid, if anything, uh, they got the, the lowest paid. So uh, their, their role in society was to do all the dirty work. Uh, everything that nobody else wants to do, they had to do it. So for example, the gladiators had to, had to fight. Slaves had to uh, take care uh, of other people. Uh, 
take care of their business. And uh, well, convicts were thrown into arenas also as gladiators, homeless, the same thing. So uh, while, while they're doing all the dirty work, um, the people, the rich people, the Senate, the uh, Commodus, Proximo, uh, all the people with wealth and money uh, and can sit back and relax and uh, in turn they're, they're getting all the profit while the slaves, the gladiators, the homeless, the convicts are doing all the dirty work. had to train most of the day. Uh, so we see how uh, their, their training and their victories in battle might uh, give them another role in society. Uh, to, For example, uh, Lucius, uh, Lucilla's son views Maximus as a hero. Uh, Maximus' main role as a gladiator, so he's, he's viewed by a lot of people as compared to a slave at the very bottom. His victories, in turn, uh, give him a greater role in society. So, uh, and in turn, his, his many victories uh, inflict with Commodus' role as an emperor. Commodus' main role is to uh, get the people to love him and appreciate him for bringing in the games. Uh, Maximus, uh, just simply uh, being alive, going into the games, and uh, disobeying his orders, uh, simply conflict with one another. So we see how uh, a communist, uh, conflict, from a conflict perspective, his role of being an emperor